So I'm sure if you're a Go engineer, you've probably worked with raw SQL queries in Go to some type of extent. And the chances are you've probably interfaced your methods, something similar to this, or you've had like a generic method called, I don't know, Stora seems to be quite common, uh, or, you know, repository, something like that, right? And you've got all of your, your methods in it, and these are your raw SQL queries now. So the chances are you've probably got something like get entity by ID or like get user by ID, get user by email, little things like that, right? And I've seen lots of people and their takes on this and myself, I've done, had various different takes on this uh, over the years in Go. And I just wanted to make a quick video today to kind of go over a very nice, or in my opinion, a very nice way of uh, actually dealing with raw SQL queries in Go. Uh, there's a few things that I've tried to solve essentially. Now, the first one is I've seen people, you know, duplicate SQL queries per method. So they'll have a whole entire query, get profile by ID, and they'll have a select, they'll scan out all the columns uh, in, in this method, and they'll copy that and then do it in another method. And it just gets really messy and it gets really hard to maintain. Um, so you can see here, this is using the repository pattern. Now this is a Postgres implementation. Uh, and you'll notice that a few things, right? So firstly, this is a like public method. So a public get profile by ID method. And you obviously can't see the SQL query in this function. So how I've structured this, and I've got this idea from other projects and it's, it seems to be quite a common one, but nonetheless, I thought I'd show it off. Uh, all of the public methods essentially call through to private methods, right? So the private methods are what actually have the queries on it. So any kind of finding operation on a profile will call through to this private method. And this private method will essentially take in a filter type, right? So, uh, so currently I've only got two filters on here, a UID and a user ID. And you simply can just obviously have, have all those filters optional and you can just do your, you know, your if not equal to nil thing, then you build up, you know, your where arguments and your, um, yeah, your where clauses, your joins, anything you need to do in here. So say, I don't know, say a profile needs to go get, uh, I don't know, followers of that profile or account or something, and it needs to do a join, you would do that all in here as well, right? Um, so you can see here, this scans out all the fields on a profile. And you'll also notice that this takes in a transaction up here. So all of the private methods essentially take in a transaction. So it allows you to then call multiple private methods in a public method without actually having to worry about, um, am I doing this in a transaction? Because if you just do everything in a transaction, it makes your life a lot easier when wanting to reuse methods or extend methods because you know everything except one already and you can just pass that around and uh, you can have trust that obviously it's all gonna run in that single transaction. Um, so you'll notice here that this get profile by ID one does the, does the find profiles method, which does return a slice of profile and obviously just takes the first one. If there's not any found, obviously I return a not found error. And the other thing I do inside of the transaction here is I go and get the experiences for a profile. Now, if we go over to the, um, the profile entity, uh, this one, you'll notice that every profile has an experience field on it, which is a slice of experience, right? So if we go back to the repo here, that means that obviously I want to get the profile object, but I also want to go and get all the associated experience with that profile. You know, I can obviously just call this get experiences for profile whenever I need to, as sometimes a profile, you know, I might not want to call that out. So the find profiles method doesn't get any other entities. It just gets its own entity, so profile, because if I start, you know, adding joins in there, then I'm scanning everything out in times where I won't need to. So where I'm finding a profile by ID, I know I want to get the experiences out. So I simply, if I can find it again, I simply just call the get profile for experience one. And again, you'll notice that I'm simply passing through the transaction um, and then obviously committing that. Uh, one nice little hack for your SQL queries in Go is if you are using transactions, which if you follow this pattern, you'll have to, is typically I see a lot of people when they do like their rollback stuff, they'll either do like a Boolean, which is like should roll back and they'll... Um, you know, they'll do a lot of logic on if you've got an error, then you need to set this Boolean to true and have like a defer function, which reads the Boolean. And if you have to roll back, it would then cause rollback. But the other thing you can do, um, which is quite nice, is you can actually just call roll, roll back at all times. So if you just do a defer func and just call roll back, roll back, if the function errors with an error transaction closed, you know that the transaction's finished, it's been committed, and you can just like not do anything right at that point. But if this isn't a error for rolling back, then, then this will actually roll back, right? So if it's not closed, sorry, then it will roll back. So it's, it's just a nice way of handling rollbacks, in my opinion, and it works quite nicely. Um, 
But you'll notice that this, this should just be a lot more maintainable because every time I want to add another field to an entity, I, I just go to the single place and any of the public methods that are calling it simply already have that field because they all reuse the same query. So if you use a library like SQL C or GORM, you obviously get a certain level of type safety. Uh, whereas with raw SQL queries, you don't get that. So if you have a syntax error in this string, then obviously there's no compiler or linter to shout at you. So one thing I highly recommend you guys do that are working with raw SQL queries in Go is to do some type of integration tests. Now, I previously was using a test container or a embedded Postgres implementation. Now, there's actually a video on that that I'll link in the description if you want to go see how I've done that. Currently, I'm just running all of these integration tests in a test Docker container. Uh, I just found that to be the most efficient for me, and it just means I can spin down and spin up a fresh Postgres server each time for the tests. Um, so how I currently do that is I have this repo test package. I've got a whole video on this, so I'll keep it this short. But essentially, these just test all the methods on a repository, right? So I try to add and save experiences. I try to add and save profiles, et cetera. And then obviously, uh, what I can do then is have actual kind of Postgres tests, which go and run the uh, the Postgres um, repository against the uh, repo test package there. So it just passes in the repo and then all those tests are obviously run against it. So uh, to keep this video, to finish this video there, um, a very quick video this is, I suppose. But if you are looking for a nice way to manage your SQL queries in Go, then I highly su suggest checking out this pattern of having your private methods and having your public ones call through to them with transactions. Um, and you can see stuff like here where I'm attaching a roles to users. And then obviously, again, the other thing I highly suggest you do is have some type of integration test to ensure your strings are actually tested and you can actually be more confident in your raw SQL queries. Um, so hopefully you got some value from this video. I'm going to leave it here. Uh, please leave a like if you have enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.